Uh, my name is Eitan Stein. I'm a leukemia physician on the leukemia service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Genetics is the study of specific gene mutations, while genomics looks at the entire genome. I think when it comes, though, to discussing this in, for patients with myelodysplastic syndromes, they really tend to be used uh, as synonyms. So we talk about the genetics of a patient's disease, or we talk about um, a patient's genomic profile. Um, really what we're interested in talking about, and I think what people really are getting to, is what genes in that particular patient are mutated, and if there are genes that are mutated, what can we do with those mutations? How are those mutations? Uh, how do they provide prognostic information? And number two, can they provide information about the best treatment the patient might be able to receive? Um, the way we, we use genetic mutations in terms of treatment decisions is twofold. So on the one hand, we know that there are certain genetic mutations that when they occur in patients with myelodysplastic syndromes, they portend a higher risk of transformation to uh, a more serious disease called acute myeloid leukemia, and that the MDS is going to progress more rapidly. Um, so one of the things we use is we use that to try to gauge, well, how long is this patient going to have MDS that I can just treat in my clinic, or is there going to come a time in knowing the genetics that I might have to send the patient to think about an allogeneic bone marrow transplant? Um, in terms of the specific treatment of patients with um, MDS, there are a number of uh, targeted agents that target specific genetic mutations that are found in patients with MDS and a lot that are in development. So we talked about at our meeting today, there is a drug called APR246, which is a drug that is thought to reactivate mutations in P53. P53 mutations are quite common in patients with myelodysplastic syndromes. So if this drug goes through you know, all of its clinical trials, ends up being positive, it's approved, that could be a drug that would be very, very um, potentially beneficial for, for patients with MDS with P53 mutations. I think the other class of um, drugs that we think about for genetic mutations are for patients with mutations in genes called IDH1 or IDH2. Those are actually less common. They only occur in about 5% of patients with MDS. But we have some very good drugs that are approved for the treatment of AML um, that one could potentially use in patients with myelodysplastic syndromes. Yeah, so I think, you know, with all of these classification systems, whether it's IPSSR or, or IPSS, you know, what, I, what we're trying to do is come up with the most accurate way using all of the information that we have of predicting how a patient is going to do. Right now, the IPSSR does not include specific genetic mutation information. It does include cytogenetics information, so abnormalities of the chromosomes. But I think that in further iterations of the IPSSR, it would be certainly helpful if we could refine um, the categories by including more information that we've learned about over the past 10 years. One of the ways you can look at how aggressive a, uh, MDS is going to be is going to be looking at the IPSS or the IPSSR, you know, which take into account age, cytogenetics, the number of bone marrow blasts, which to some uh, degree is a measure of the aggressiveness of the disease, the number of um, cytogenetic or what those cytogenetic abnormalities are, the number of cytopenias. Um, and what, what you can do with that, it can sort of measure how, that, that's your measure of how aggressive the disease is going to be. The, the problem is, though, that the IPSSR is, you know, very good as a first pass prognostic tool, but not all patients follow the rules. So as a doctor who treats these patients, one of the things I do is I, I pay very close attention to, you know, are, is this patient's blood counts dropping? Are they developing more blasts in their blood? Do we need to do another bone marrow biopsy to um, see exactly what their disease is doing? Because we do want to sort of catch that point before they've progressed to AML but at the time that they are um, no longer have, let's say, low-risk disease and it's turning into something more aggressive. Yeah, so I think what patients need to know, um, it's important to know that there is a huge, enormous amount of research being done in this area and that the research being done in this area has already led to and will likely lead to more treatments that are targeted therapies against specific genetic mutations that, um, that patients have. And I think that to some extent, the genomics of the disease or the genomics um, or the genetics of the particular patient are going to really influence how we find the right um, concoction of different medicines that are going to be coming 
um, to fruition in the next five years or so for each individual patient so that we can treat patients not only as, you know, you've got MDS, we know that MDS is many different diseases in terms of the genetics of the disease, but we can say we're going to add on this drug or this drug or this drug, which may attack the genetic abnormalities that that patient has and hopefully allow for better outcomes.